Welcome to uh, the Transition to the Trades presented by USO and the Generation T team. Uh, it's a skilled uh, trades movement powered by Lowe's Military Associates. Uh, my name is Fred Stokes and I'm a member of the USO Board of Governors. Also, I work for Lowe's. I am a Senior Vice President of Pro Sales and Services. And also I'm a Navy veteran. So uh, for all those Navy veterans out there and uh, active duty, hello to you. Uh, glad to have you on tonight as well as other military members. Uh, Lowe's and the USO have a 10 plus year relationship uh, that's really been focused on the military community. Uh, typically honoring veterans and supporting workforce development as well as affordable housing. Uh, 2020 is no different uh, as we have in other years. We're honored to bring you something different which is virtual, virtual workshops uh, like these uh, that the USO uh, centers worldwide present. Today uh, in this particular meeting, you'll hear from industry professionals on making the transition uh, to the trades profession by 2028. Uh, if you think about it, uh, in 2028, uh, there will be over 3 million unfilled jobs in the skills trades area. And despite the recent economic challenges, uh, the construction industry remains very strong and will be an important part of the country's uh, economic recovery. Uh, Generation T was founded by Lowe's uh, in 2018 to help revitalize the skills trade and also create career opportunities for uh, people like yourselves. Uh, it's a collaboration of over 80 nationwide partners working to influence uh, American public to challenge and change the perception of the trade skills. The world of skilled trades professionals is probably much different than what you might think. Today, advancements in technology will help us build bigger and stronger. If you really think about, or you're curious about what your future might look like, uh, I invite you to uh, follow along and we'll show a video here in a few minutes uh, that shares a little bit more about Generation T. What I will also share with you is this. I, I think uh, whether you're a military veteran or if you're currently in the military, or you might be a spouse of someone in the military and you've really, really been the support of a military member, uh, there's often challenges that you run into, especially getting out of the uh, military. I recall uh, I was an E5 and AZ, and as I started filling out applications and everything else, it was really hard for people to understand what my skill sets were or to be able to transition them over into uh, corporate America. That was one aspect, but what you'll find is that as you start to look deeper, your skills are extremely transferable. But if you think about the trades industry as in, uh, a general, today, like unlike when I was in high school, there were things like carpenters, you can go to mechanic shops and all those different things. A lot of those resources have been removed from schools. And one thing that people may not realize is that these are really good jobs that pay good money day in and day out. And those trades are diminishing every day. And so there's a skilled workforce that's there and jobs just waiting for people. And there are people in the military or spouses of military members that have some skills that can transfer over into the trades. All you gotta do is learn a trade. Uh, it's not often we know what we want to do, and sometimes we get into the military because we really don't know what to do. But what I will share with you is that's been my life, and you could have never told me in a million years that I would be a senior vice president of a Fortune 50 company. But that was years after going into the military at 17, uh, becoming a law enforcement officer after that, uh, getting my undergrad degree, getting my MBA, and eventually getting with the FBI, uh, working as a special agent, I never thought I'd be in retail. But after the Bureau, I did go into the re retail environment and covered many different jobs. But all of that is because I just kept developing myself. And I think this is a really, really great opportunity 
for everyone to really take a look at the particular trade and see, is this an opportunity for you? Is this something that you can do? I can guarantee you this, if you step in it now, uh, you won't be looking for jobs that often. There are many professionals out there that are looking for skills, trades to work in the industry. So I invite you to take a look at this Generational T video, and I hope you enjoyed this opportunity tonight. And if you want to look me up and ask a question, I'm available for you. You can look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, I am Fred Stokes. And so just look me up and I can answer any question that you might have. But again, I thank you all. And I thank also the USO for giving me the opportunity and Lowe's as well. Have a great night and have a good time. They said our capes didn't show to enough class to be heroes. They said we were the butt of the joke because we didn't attend their ivies. But they forgot to mention, debt is not the prereq to living the dream. You don't have to lean on a desk when you have the drive to design your own league. By design, these hands summon creativity. Technology and trade. Two converging paths, Mother Earth and Mother Board, shaping the terrain for the next generation. We are the rightful journeymen, the waymakers. When the banks crash and the stocks fall, we set the bearing straight. Scrape our knees on sunbeams, hold families together within the framework of our mind, turn businesses into our business, with the vision that keeps the lights on, we build a better world out of thin air. This is the what if for the future masters of trade. The electricians and bricklayers, solar power technicians, energy auditors, tiny home builders for the ones who don't care about the color of a collar. Craftsmanship is a calling. What if the Vaysayers were so worried about making it in society, they forgot to value the hands that make the society? What if you could live the life you've always dreamed right from where you are? Your career choice isn't a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of knowing what you can do. There's work to be done. Are you ready? All right, everyone, hope you are ready. We've got lots of great information for you today. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Lauren Norman from Lowe's. She's their pro customer engagement manager who's gonna talk more about how Lowe's is working to rebuild the skilled trades. Um, so Lauren, I'll let you take it away. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today to learn more about career opportunities in the skilled trades. Generation T aims to inspire, educate, and connect our next generation of skilled trades experts with a rewarding career for small business in the trades. As you just heard from Fred Stokes, our country is facing a massive shortage of skilled trades professionals, including electricians, which you'll get to learn about this evening, carpenters, plumbers, HVAC installers, and appliance repair technicians. There is an estimated 3 million jobs in the skilled trades that will go unfilled by 2028. And despite recent economic challenges with COVID-19, the industry still remains strong and is considered essential to our workforce and our future. The skilled trades are truly the backbone of our economy, and you can earn a great living to support your family, 
and be ultimately become your own boss. Around 11% of small construction businesses in the United States today are owned by veterans. As you explore what's next for your career, we hope that you will consider future opportunities in the trade industry. If we look at our next slide here, it's gonna show you some of our data as we look at the gap with current tradespeople that are retiring at record numbers and our supply does not meet our workforce demand. We know that about 30% of our workforce will retire by the year 2028. And today only 14% of our school systems offer shop class to educate students about those future opportunities. In the past 50 years, there's been a big shift for schools to really reward and encourage students to pursue a four-year college pathway and really kind of push the skilled trades to the back burner. What this means for you is that there is a viable, fulfilling, and profitable future in the skilled trades. It's out there, it's waiting, and it's ready for the taking. There's a variety of opportunities for you to advance in the industry. And today we're gonna again, focus on what does that electrical pathway look like? When you look at our next slide here, you're going to see, you know, even in our opening video, how the trades, it's not a thing of the past and it's very much about the future. And we're focused on making it cool, right? Making it very much about the crafts, um, using technology and innovation or innovative solutions every day to build, create and hone your craft from high school students to transitioning service members, veterans, family members like you, we celebrate craftspeople who relish the challenge of creating something out of raw materials and mastering the skills required to do it. It really is a true art and a craft. When we look at our next slide here, this kind of just begins to tee up when you think about the pathway in the electrical field. There's such a reliance on electricity in our daily lives. I think about, you know, in our homes, in the workplace, everywhere that we go, inside, outside, buildings, you know, newer buildings, older buildings, you know, wiring, there's just everything, all of our devices and appliances are reliant on electricity. So when you look at the earnings potential, it's very strong for an electrician. And then even when you look at the job outlook, when you see almost 1 million opportunities out of that, again, 3 million, the majority is really within the electrical pathway. Master electricians, they have intensive training. This is a very specialized field. It can take about two to four years for them to complete their apprenticeship and their formalized training to obtain their license. Um, and then when you look at our next slide here, it'll just kind of walk you through just some of the general duties and requirements of an electrician. There's definitely a lot of potential career paths. I'm really excited for you to be able to hear from our industry expert this evening about just a day in the life and what does it look like, you know, to be out there in the real world as an electrician. Um, safety, you know, is essential when we think about this role. Um, but again, it's very technical in nature, very specialized. You rely very heavily on technical skills and problem solving. But then there's also the opportunity for creativity and variety in your day. And then we kind of look at our next slide here. This just tees up, you know, as you begin to think about next steps and training opportunities. You know, if you're interested in tonight and what you hear, if you know of family members, just wanted to share with you very briefly that here at Lowe's, we have a pre-apprentice certificate program called Track to the Trades in which we pay 100% for our associates to pursue one of five pathways to get that, again, more of a pre-apprentice certificate. We have appliance repair, carpentry, electrical, HVAC, and plumbing. But after six months of employment, you're eligible to enroll and apply, and it's paid for 100%. So it's just one way that we're able to support the broader Generation T movement for our associates. So without further ado, I feel that you're in for a real treat this evening. Very excited for you to get to hear from Mike Piper from our Lowe's military recruiting team, and then he'll introduce our guest speaker. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Mike, enjoy. Thank you, Lauren, I appreciate it. Like Lauren said, I'm Mike Piper. I am the military recruiting strategist here at Lowe's, um, as well as a proud Air Force veteran. Um, that was a mechanic when he was in the military. So really excited to talk about 
theological career field because it dealt with a lot of what I did in the military. And still today, I deal with it almost every day, as you see it sitting around me, lighting me up today. So without further ado, I'm super excited to have uh, my co-host for tonight, uh, Chad German. Um, he will be joining me. Uh, but Chad, what's up? How's it going? Great, man. How are you? I'm doing good. So let's go ahead and just kick it off. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how, uh, a little bit about what you do. So my name is Chad German. I'm a uh, master electrician here in the state of Utah. Uh, Lauren had said that it could take uh, two to four years to become, uh, you know, to go through your apprenticeship and get a master electrician's license. Here in the state of Utah, it takes eight, four years of school. And then you do, uh, uh, you take three state tests and then you have to wait four years and take three more. But you can get a journeyman in between that. That's a qualified electrician and you get, that's a the, the master electrician is just kind of a notch on the belt that not a lot of people want to go for. But um, so I've been a master electrician for about seven years now here in the state of Utah. Um, and I love the trade. I've done I've done everything from finishing the basement uh, service calls to running big Walmart projects or, or uh, hotels and and uh, hospitals. So I've been around the whole thing. I've done everything. And uh, I completely in love with the field. Um, I teach here at the trade school. I teach the first year apprentice and the fourth year guys getting ready for school. And then I, I also started a consulting business where I, I travel the country and I teach the code changes and leadership and different things uh, of that nature. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm super excited to have you here. And I know uh, everybody at home is excited to have you as well. So before we jump down the, the road of several other questions, I want to go ahead and remind the audience that down below, right in the center, it should be like right down in that area, right in the middle, there should be a uh, question and answer section. So uh, feel free to ask us any questions that you have around um, the electron, or electrical career field. Um, and we're going to be able to talk with Chad about those questions and go through those. Um, so make sure you pop in there and um, answer or give us a few questions uh, for Chad to answer. But we're going to start it off. And, and Chad, I just want to hear how you got into electrical career field. Um, obviously, everybody has their own journey and their own story. So um, tell me a little bit about how you got interested in electrical. Well, I had, I had gotten married uh, pretty young. I was 20 years old. My wife was 18. And I had just started grabbing, you know, going to every job I could to find a, a job. I wasn't really looking for a career at that, that point. I don't know why. Um, and uh, I had done personal training. I had done, you know, window washing, started my own little window washing business, uh, doing the high rises down in downtown Salt Lake City. I had done office work and um, we had a, a, a son. He's 13, uh, uh, 15 now. Sorry, I'm not good with ages. Um, he's 15 now and uh, he was born with a disease called aniridia. He was born without his irises and um, I just had a, a crossroad in my life that I, I had to find a career to be able to provide for this family. So uh, uh, my dad had been hitting me up to be an electrician because he wanted to do that, but he was colorblind. So uh, obviously I wasn't, I got into the trade and uh, it just took off. I've just, I've just loved it ever since I joined, uh, joined the, the apprenticeship program. Oh, that's awesome. Well, first off, you're not afraid of heights. That's for sure. If you were a yeah. window washer before you went to be an electrical or an electrician or a master electrician. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so take me through, you know, you, you obviously teach, you teach a lot of first year um, of students coming through, but uh, take me through a typical day in, in the life of an electrician. I mean, it, it really depends on the, the, uh, the position you're in, as well as the, uh, the part of the industry, you know, our, the electrical industry is, it's not small, you know, we can, uh, for example, the company I work for, I run the service division where we have uh, guys that run around doing service calls and I, and I just go do the bids and I, I show up to the jobs uh, and, and help the guys out when they need it. Um, and then we have a residential side and then we have an industrial side uh, and then we have a commercial side. So um, all those jobs look a little bit different. You know, the guys doing residential, they're moving a lot faster, just cranking houses out as quick as they can a, a lot. Uh, it's more fast paced than you know what you would have a, a commercial job, but more technical and more of a skill set on a commercial and a, an industrial job. But for the most part, you got to obviously make sure you're being safe out there. You're 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 moving and you're uh, you're. It's a physical job, um, and then uh, you got to also uh, know what you're you're doing as far as wiring things up. Um, so uh, if you wire something up wrong, you're gonna 
cause a fire or a, you know, a little arc blast or explosion, if you will. Um, so there's a lot of safety issues that you get trained in as you come in. Um, but everybody's day looks a little different. Uh, foreman, uh, when I was running uh, Walmarts and I had 25 guys underneath me, I was in safety meetings and I was in ordering parts and I was lining guys out. I wasn't really an electrician at that point. I was a manager. Um, but you have to go through the apprenticeship program and everything to get to that point. Uh, for the average electrician, it's a journeyman electrician. Um, obviously, you got to size your circuits. Uh, you go through and you rough in this electrical uh, at the beginning. So rough in means uh, you're going to put the boxes on the wall, the enclosures, run your raceways and your cables. Um, and then you they sheetrock and they paint and they do all that. And you come back and then you terminate everything uh, and then troubleshoot if there's any issues at that point. So yeah, which um, roughing in is not the easiest thing in the world to do because you basically have a, a blank slate and you don't know where things are going. You kind of got to look at a blueprint, figure it out, which is which is, uh, I guess you get your problem solving skill sometimes with that. Right. Yeah. The residential guys don't get a blueprint. They get a homeowner saying, move that over here. No, never mind. Move it over here. And so uh, that's one reason I don't like the, the residential as much as commercial. I could, I could roll out some plans and just uh, go to town and, and look at the plans and get it done. But um, I get into that residential stuff and those younger guys, uh, I win every single day on a race, but it's just because of my personality. I go home and I cry. But they, they can kill me those young guys <laughs> that's awesome um so uh real quick we're gonna launch a poll uh and actually uh just a question about how long until you transition for our service members that are on um the call today actually looking to transition out of the military we just want to see when is um your service end date so when are you trying to transition out how long is it until you're going to make that career move um so if you could go ahead and um Throw in your, your answers there. Um, that'd be greatly appreciated. And we'll go ahead and get the results here in a second. But till then, let's go ahead, Chad, and let, let's talk a little bit about the hard skill. Let's see what hard skills and training should someone have before they even go to school um, to be an apprenticeship or apprentice? You know, I actually get this question a lot. I have a, a social media platform, uh, ba electrical based, that is pretty large. So I get a lot of questions on hey, I'm getting into school or uh, the pre-apprentice thing. You know, Texas has a pre-apprentice program. Um, Utah doesn't. You just have to get a job with an employer. Um, and I get this question, what are the skill sets that I need? And I would just say the biggest thing is to be able to communicate in a manner that, uh, and I'm sure uh, as I've talked to uh, a few of my students, one of my fourth year students is a, is a veteran and, I, and he's older. And I asked him, I told him what I was going to do today. And I asked him, uh, what are some things maybe that these guys could take from the military in? Uh, and he said that it's definitely a communication thing. If you're, if your boss lines you out or your foreman on a project and um, you just say, okay, I'll figure it out. And you go and you don't really have it figured out. Um, there can be some issues because you could, you can cause some, a fire or something like that. So communication is a big thing. Uh, you know, throw the pride out the window and uh, just be teachable. Uh, as you get into the trade, um, everybody has an ego and you have to leave that at the door or you're not gonna, you know, the, hard, the guys that have a harder time are the ones that think they know everything already. So um, there's books and there's YouTube that a lot of guys go to to, to learn the basics, uh, how to pipe bend. And, you know, when I went through electrical school, I'm an old man. So uh, even though I got in the trade at 29, we didn't have YouTube. And, and I look at the, my students, uh, my son's 19 and he's a first year in this class. And um, he's been helping me since he's nine. So he's got a little bit of an edge on these guys that are even a little bit older. But uh, I find him going to YouTube a lot of times um, to find things out if he's not quite jiving with uh, the lecture in the class or, or whatever. So um, I would say just be proactive in your own education and uh, be humble enough. Uh, I'm considered a code expert in, in the uh, in the industry, a lot of people hit me up for code and I don't know everything. I, I learned something yesterday, I learned something today and I, I'm teaching hundreds of people a week. I, I do that all the time. So um, just be humble and, and ready to learn and, and have a good work ethic. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Uh, we have a, my, one of my apprentices that works di directly under me is a 24 year old female electrician. And um, everybody thinks it's because she's female that she's so much better. But I would say that uh, Abigail just knows how to focus and get work done. And I think if you can learn how to do those things, uh, you're going to go really, really far in the career. 
Yeah, I think that's, you know, you bring up a good point because it's not just in, in, in one career field or anywhere. I think it's just in general life. You got to continue to learn. Like there's, there's no spot for stopping to learn. Like you just got to keep going and keep learning. So, right. you know, I, and I, and I love the fact that you brought up, you know, doing some research and, and, and watching some YouTube or uh, watching some, you know, maybe a, a show that's dedicated to um, the life of, of skilled trades. Right. Um, but doing all that and you've prepared yourself, you've done some of the, the, the pre-work and trying to learn to make sure that this is something that you want to do. So done all that. Now, how would someone get started and how would they go about going in and pursuing this career path? So uh, I did hear some stuff that, uh, that Lowe's has uh, offers for uh, the military to be able to get a pre-apprentice. Every state is completely different. For an example, I teach uh, code preparation classes or exam preparations uh, every Sunday and it's open to anybody in the country. And uh, New York, for an example, New York, every county has its own licensing requirements. So if you wanted to start your own business in New York or become an electrician, uh, Manhattan area, uh, you just go and you're an electrician. You just find a, a place to, to sponsor you and then you're an electrician. Um, and again, here in Utah, the whole entire state, everybody goes through the rigorous uh, responsibilities that it takes to become a journeyman apprentice. In fact, a lot of people try to leave to go to Idaho to pass their test to come back and because they they correspond and in california you know you see a lot of guys that are in their their early 20s starting up their own businesses and stuff like that so it really depends on uh where you're at um the you know out here you just got to go find a job a lot of employers will pay for the school if you get an a or a good grade but it's just like uh, that everything that's been brought up up to this point is look we need electricians and um uh, I was just talking to my boss uh, just right before the class. And he said, Chad, I don't think we've ever been this busy before. And he said the same thing in December. And he said the same thing in February. And I can tell you right now that this summer was the busiest I've ever been. And um, so, you know, we're considered essential workers at this point because we've got to be in people's houses. We've got to, you know, we've got to, if somebody's power goes out and they have a um, some sort of a respiratory uh, assistance and it needs to charge and have power to it they need an electrician there and if if they don't have that then that's a life and death situation so um it really is a career and something that uh, uh i find joy in watching the younger guys as they turn on a circuit and everything turns on and, and you can see a family living in the house after you've wired it up and they're warm and their lights are on and uh um all the things that you help provide for that family uh through your hard work and and to be honest with you it's it's a skilled uh, thing. I've never heard it hurt for money, even as an apprentice, because people hired me for side work. And uh, it's provided for my family very well, as far as having these skills. Um, not everybody has them. So it, it makes a, a, a big difference. Yeah. And I think you just hit on something that is um, pretty, uh, pretty well known in the military community, right? So whether you're military spouse, or you're, you're, you're a veteran, or you're a military service member, um, being an entrepreneur is like the dream when you're in the service and you're about ready to get out, you want to be your own boss. I think Lauren touched on that too. And you just touched on it again saying, you know, even though you had jobs, you had side jobs that helped with that. And you basically were having your own small business. Right. And, uh, with that being said, you know, um, I know the guy that I worked for was my original foreman uh, in a big company and he started his own business and I was running big jobs and, and my goal was to start my own business. And so I came with him and cause I wasn't a master yet. You have to have a master's license. And I said, I'm going to come with you and learn how to become a, uh, get my master's license, but I'm going to learn what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right for when I go into business. Well, I came and uh, we build a company together and I can't imagine myself driving around uh, doing work by myself. I'm, I've been around crews uh, for the last, you know, 15 years and love being part of a crew. I don't want to go be self-employed. It's not my thing, but you can go be self-employed and take very well, you know, make really good money. Um, again, he, got, he offered me an office position to sit and be an estimator. Uh, this is just going through the apprenticeship program, no degree or anything. And uh, I just can't sit in an office. It's just not my thing. No, no offense to anybody in here that sits in an office, but uh, I got some issues. I got to be out and moving. And, and I love waking up in the morning and, and going to a different place every day. I, I, it, it really helps with, uh, you know, on my positivity, just a new scene every day or e even once a month. And then you move on to the next project. It's not stuck in the same place over and over. So that's the those are things I love about the career for sure. 
Fantastic. So um, got a few questions on the on the uh, chat here. So I'm going to just bundle like two or three of them together real quick because there are around apprenticeship programs and there are questions about, well, where can I find an apprenticeship program in this state or where can I find an apprenticeship program over here? Is there a, a site um, or, you know, maybe something the Department of Labor offers for you to be able to find apprenticeships pretty easily? Yeah, I know that there's a few places. In fact, I'm, I'm part of a website that's just going to launch here in the future that's going to have something like that where you go and you can click on whatever state, you know, you have the, you will have a, a map of the, the country and you can click on whatever state and it will give you the requirements. It will tell you that, you know, you can click on a city and it would show you what schools that are available. Right now, MikeHolt.com, uh, he's a, a, you know, an industry leader would be a, a kind of a small way to, to bring it like we all have his books so he's, he's a, a close friend of mine but he's he's the guy right now that's doing all the stuff for teaching and and curriculum and uh, more things are coming out um, and then there's union and non-union stuff like that uh, that has different curriculum so that's another a thing if you wanted to go union uh, your union hall provides the j the the, um, the schooling for that and then if you're non-union uh, you'd have to find a trade school that was close to you. Um, and there's like, we have IEC out here that does online only. And then we have like MTech, it's our whole county has the school. So uh, we have five different campuses and stuff like that with ours. So I think if you went to mycolt.com and looked up trade school near you, uh, I don't know if he has all of them. Uh, that's something that's fairly easy to find out wherever you reside and, and uh um, where you're, whenever you're, you're going to be established, you could look up a, a trade school that's local. IEC is nationwide, uh, and that's a non-union uh, schooling as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And another resource I'll add is just uh, wearegenerationt.com. Um, that actually has some spots in there where you can look for apprenticeship and schooling. You type in your zip code, be able to find your apprenticeship that's near you that's part of the, the movement is, of, is of, of Generation T. Um, and also as well as all the schools that are part of that too, to where you can uh, be able to move forward with your um, career um, in electrical as well as other skilled trades. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna, we're gonna actually do another question and it's gonna be um, a little bit different because you mentioned that you have a 15 year old son. So I wanna go ahead and talk a little bit about that because when I came out of high school, uh, it was either the military or, you know, I really liked the skilled trades. And I thought about doing the skilled trades, but chose the military instead because I wanted to get out of my whole my little small town in, in Indiana and the cornfields and the sheep farms. Um, but um, the question here that James has is that, you know, it, uh, as a 13 year old looking into the trades after high school in a place of a vocational tech, what can I do during high school to begin the trade skills journey? Now, again, that, that's uh, dependent on where you're at. Here in the state of Utah, um, they've, they've offered me a position here at the school, and I think I'm going to have to turn it down because of other things that are going on. Um, but uh, the state has, uh, has made it so that you can get your apprenticeship license at 15 or 16. I'll have to look into that. Uh, and every state's different. Um, and then when you're in high school, you're, you're able to come to these classes during the day and they'll count towards your, your high school credits as well. So they were asking me to be a teacher during the day for the high school students. Um, and then you just go, and then by the time you come out from high school, uh, here in the state of Utah, you can get a residential journeyman at, at, second, at a second year. You're looking at a 25 bucks an hour um, right out of high school, which is out here in the state of Utah, which is a really good living. There's, there's people out here not living off of that. And, uh, and then you do another two years to get your journeyman, you're looking at 35 bucks an hour. So, um, you know, my son, if he went through the four year program at 23, he's making, you know, 70,000 a year. That's without any overtime. Now, again, we're short on people. So there's not a week we go by without overtime. There just, there really isn't. And so uh, um, we have guys, uh, we just hired a guy that left, that was in my fourth year class last year. He's making six figures. And in the state of Utah, cost of living isn't that high. So six figures goes a long ways. It's not like a New York City or California. So um, the career right now, uh, there's a lot of money to be made, especially, again, if you can focus and you can get yourself to that level um, uh, that you're kind of running jobs and stuff like that. So, Perfect. So I think, you know, this kind of leads into this next question that I got here that's um, around how difficult it is to learn um, without any prior experience um, to be, you know, for the apprenticeship. Like how hard is the training? 
That's a good question. And uh, that's a hard one to answer because we're all different, right? Um, I am not a quick learner by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not somebody that can read a book and have it memorized <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and in fact, I struggled in first year of school, uh, mostly because my teacher would just talk and, we'd, and then all of a sudden hand you a test and you, you didn't get taught anything. But, but uh, I also was older and I struggled through high school, whatever. I, I, I learned how to focus and it's all pertaining to the trade, voltage drop. It it's, seems like a hard concept when you start teaching the guys the math for voltage drop, but once you do it five or six times and it applies to the job, uh, it, it, you can find it fairly easy. So I would say, uh, again, I, I have a hard time saying it's an easy thing because for me, it, it was a struggle at the beginning and then it, still to this day, I study two, night, two hours a night, every single night. And uh, um, so I, I just, I would say that if it's hard for you, you just got to work a little harder. We have guys, I've had guys come to class and they're not here, you know, they're, they've drank something or they're, they're, you know, something's happened and then, then they're a life away from class and they come to class and they're not here every day and um, they still pass and they do fine. So um, to some, it's really, really easy. Now, I'm not very mechanically inclined in nature. My son's better than that. There's times I'm over there trying to, to do things and my son will come by and just like, watch out dad. And he'll tie a string to a bolt and drop it down the wall and pull the wire up. I'm like, okay, uh, good job, son. And, you know, so, uh, but I've made it to a master electrician and a industry leader. So I think that uh, if you put your aim to it, it, it's not too hard of a, a thing to accomplish. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I got a, one on here that I'll answer real quick from Alan that's around the US military apprenticeship program and certs offered by the Department of Labor. Those are all, uh, if I'm not mistaking, um, are actually certified by the GI Bill. So you can actually use those, yes, to you know start something. I'm sure, Chad, is that, uh, um, is that correct? Uh, yeah, as far as I understand. Okay, cool. Um, so we got that one. Um, and then we got another really good one here because I, I want to know this actually because I had an electrician here not too long ago. He replaced my electrical box. I'll tell you, for one afternoon of work, I, I question what I do now. Um, I will tell you that just for him to replace my electrical box and upgrade it. Um, I was very uh, questioning if I should move into the electrical career field after that. Um, but what is the biggest surprise, what surprised you the most about your career as an electrician? The thing that surprises me the most? Yeah. Um, uh, that's a broad question. Let me, well, you're talking about like dealing with customers, you know, I've dealt with uh, people out here in Utah. There's a lot of money out here. And so one guy said, I want you to move these five switches two feet over here. And I was like, um, well, there's sheetrock on the wall, you know, you, I'm going to have to, that's going to be like seven hours worth of work. Uh, that's going to cost you like a thousand bucks. I don't care about price. And then, uh, you know, a day later when you get it done, he goes, that took forever. I thought it would take five minutes. Like people don't understand the work it would take to like, you know, we can't just splice things in walls and cover it and move it over. Like people think because there's fire hazards up there. You have to, things have to be accessible. So I had to, you know, unhook everything in that box, pull it up to the attic, fish everything back down, make a splice up in the attic and then rewire it all. And there was three way switches and dimmer switches. And it was, a, uh, it was, a. Uh, it was a situation that uh, that that guy didn't understand what I had to go to. The crawl spaces, uh, attics. Now, when I say I love being an electrician, I love working in the snow. I love uh, I love the cold. I love the hot. I love I just love you know the toughness of of uh, what it takes to sometimes just get a wire from point A to point B. Uh, so um, if you're, <laughs> I don't say if you're not into that, but that's the part of the trade I'm in. You, you could go wire a, a PLCs. Uh, you got to go through the program to get that, and you're standing at a in an assembly line wiring up PLCs, making you know 160 thousand a year. That's a, a more of a brain thing than it is a physical labor. So electrical industry can be anywhere from uh, the guy underneath the attic or the crawl space in the attic. Um, like myself, I drive around all day doing bids and yelling at guys and answering phone calls and uh, text messages. So. Um, I think I might resign and go take another job offer just to be an electrician at this point. But uh, it's it it it's taken me far, and I think if you have an open mind, you can go anywhere with it. Yeah, and I think I think you hit a good point there because you, you you talked about the satisfy 
satisfaction of being able to fish down a wire and, and do the problem solving and do that, even though um, it does move and there, there are, you know, on the customer side, there are uh, with any customer service job, right? Their, their customer is, is, is somebody that you uh, have put first in, in your, in your service. Um, and you really, you have different people that you deal with every day. And there are sometimes those difficult or surprising things, but what is the most, the, the most common misconception about the work of an electrician? Um, I think blue collar in general, um, we just get thrown into this construction uh, mindset, you know? Um, and so, so people don't realize some of the, I mean, I'll be honest, the smartest people I've ever met are in our industry and they're, in the, they're, you know, plan examiners and, and guys that are just, they know the code book and, and, and things like that. Uh, mathematics, you know, you, you have to know uh, Ohm's law and different things that you learn in electrical school. And so you, you, you use your brain uh, a lot more than just the, a construction. And, and I've worked around construction workers all day. I think that blue collar in general uh, is something that's looked down upon and it really shouldn't be. So um, anytime you learn to skill trade, that means somebody else doesn't have that skill unless you've trained yourself. And there's one thing to become a master at, at something. For an example, my wife can patch a hole in our house quicker than I can. And so uh, I can tell you, I'm a master electrician, but that's it. I can't do anything else. She does the plumbing. She did the floor on our upstairs. I tried, right? But my measurements were off. It looked bad. She ripped it out and she redid it. So um, I think whenever you get a, a, a skill set that you could take with you, uh, and, I, and I see it in these classrooms. I see a guy that can, that's a book smart kid that just knows his stuff and he goes out in the field and I talk to their bosses and they're amazing. And I see a guy that's struggling in class and he's the fastest guy in the company. And then you see the guy that's really book smart and they're like, he doesn't work really hard. So um, it's, it's one of those things that it, it kind of is attracted to all different types of personalities and, and attitudes and, and things like that. And if you just stay focused and worry about yourself, you're going to go really, really far. Well, perfect. Yeah. So the last few questions that we have around is around certifications, um, specifically license and your certification. Um, I think you and I would probably both agree on this, that it's really dependent on, on state. Yes, you can transfer between states and some aspects, right? Uh, but each state is, is, is different and you should look into it um, based off of your state because what you're going to give for Colorado may not be what New York has or Indiana or California. Um, so would you just say it, it's best to just maybe take a little bit of time and do a little bit of research on how to and, and what works and what transitions? Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, if I think the cool thing about the trade with all that being said on picking, uh, you know, how every state's different and like in, in New York, New York, like I said, every county uh, is has different requirements. Um, I had 35 guys just in New York alone in my last Zoom class on exam prep, and they all had different things to that we're going to be on those tests from the different counties. But I would say I could still go to New York. And uh, one thing that's cool about Instagram, I, I'm on Instagram, huge community on electrical. I mean, it's, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of electricians on there. I could right now take a week off of work and go to uh, 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 Northern California and uh, work for my buddy. And uh, I don't have the licenses to own that business but I have the skill set to make some money. I can go to, I went to New York with my son uh, for, uh, for a vacation and I met up with uh, about 40 different electricians. We went to lunch, we went to, you know, it was an amazing experience. So um, even though it seems like it's an independent thing through each, uh, each state, it still is a big unit. It, it's, it, once you know electrical, you know electrical. The electrical theory isn't different in New York and and uh, Wyoming and Utah. So um, the requirements, I would say, find out where you're going to uh, live after you get done in the military. And uh, or maybe when you're deciding where you want to live, um, uh, if you want to be an electrician, maybe look into those requirements and it would help you. Uh, I went to Mississippi and uh, taught a company out there some leadership stuff. And I want to move to Mississippi. Um, it was it was very humid, very, it was just great people. I loved it out there, but uh, the requirements out in Mississippi aren't like they are out here. So I could easily just jump over there, pass one of their tests and, and be an electrician in, in the state of Mississippi. Yeah, and, and that's fantastic. Um, I know, you know, is there, just cause I, I did see one of our military spouses actually asking a question around licensing and certification. 
because obviously when you're in the service, um, sometimes you're moving every 18 months. And, and when you, you try to become, you know, an electrician and you got to keep getting certified, are there fees associated with all these certifications? There are, but a lot of times what you do is you find a company to hire you. Uh, I had a buddy from England. He, uh, he came, his dad lived in California. His mom was from England. Uh, he was in the, his dad was in the military, uh, stationed in England. He got married to his mom, ended up getting a divorce, coming back anyway. So he's a dual citizen. He came here at, at 21 uh, and the training he had in, in, in uh, England was way more extensive than what we have to do here in the U.S. So he came here, just walked into a Walmart that was a construction site and said, hey, can you hire me? And they hired him and the company ended up uh, not only hiring him, but bringing him here to Utah, paying for a, a place for him to get started helped him with the licensing fees, get, you know, we are looking for electricians. So it's not going to be hard um, to find a job. If you are willing and you go out and you, you hit a couple doors and you say, Hey, look, if you can sponsor me for a license and get me in school, I'll work. You know, I, I'm pretty sure you'll find a job. So. Perfect. That's fantastic. So let's go ahead. And you said you, you made had a comment. Um, and there's a question around this. Uh, but you, you mentioned that being book smart isn't necessarily, um, is helpful, but not necessary. Um, what personal attributes uh, do the best electricians or the most successful ones have? Again, focus is huge. Um, I'll be honest, one of my students just came in, Colton. When it comes to basic math, I sit down and let Colton teach. <laughs> I'm not really good at math, but I know electrical math, right? So I'm, I figured out because it's, it's more of a, it's really gauged to what we do. And so as an electrician, if I want to figure out how many amps are on a circuit and I'm only given watts and volts, I just do, you know, watts divided by volts. It gives me, it gives me amps. And I use my calculator on my phone and I get it done. If to sit here and say I'm doing trigonometry and stuff like that, yeah, we go over it, but you don't need that for your journeyman license. You're not using it on a daily day-to-day -day basis. So I would say, um, I, I would even disagree with somebody that said to get into the trade, you have to be mechanically inclined. I say that that can be taught, right? Um, so I, I'm not a quick learner. I'm not mechanically inclined and I'm a master electrician and I teach. So I think that if you just have the willingness to learn and you're humble enough to just put the pride uh, aside and learn off, uh, off of others. You have a journeyman, the, the system is designed that that journeyman is going to train you. And uh, if your journeyman's not, and he just doesn't get along with you, go somewhere else. I mean, that's where the trade is right now. You can go anywhere and, uh, and find a job and, and be happy. So. Well, fantastic. And I think, you know, that's great advice because frankly, um, I, there is a, a stigma that you have to be mechanically inclined or smart with math or, um, but you really don't. Um, it can all be taught and it can all be learned if you have the passion and you have the drive to do so. So um, with that, you know, Chad, I, I kind of want to just get your last thoughts and, and maybe any tips for um, anybody that is looking for at electrical, uh, being an electrician uh, in the future and pursuing this career. What would be your, your last wrap up thoughts and, and, and tips? I would say this. I thought about I thought about this a lot as we got ready for this uh, fireside here. Um, our industry is because we are missing people, right? You guys went over the stats today. On uh, by 2028, we're we're talking a million jobs or three million or something like that. Um, I can tell you it's true. I can tell you um, this. And you know where I'm at right now. When I first started teaching at this trade school, we had 300 students. Now we are at 790 students for electrical just in our county. And we had to cap it off because we can't find teachers to do it. The one thing we're missing that I think you guys in the military can bring to our field is leadership. Um, we learned through the refiner's fire out here. Uh, when I, I remember I got my, my journeyman license and the company I worked for said, okay, well, here's a $900,000 project. I don't know any other industry that doesn't train you for uh, business or budget or anything like that that's going to hand you over a $900,000 project and say, here, you're the boss over this. But our trade does that. You know, you go through the trade, you learn how to do the electrical stuff, and you learn how to uh, wire things up and bend conduit and pull wire. And oh, here, here you go. You're in charge of a $900,000 project. And you got 25 guys to get the job done. And uh, the later you stay on a job, the more you take responsibility for that job, you know, the better they pat you on the back. And you learn the hard way that 
you know, ordering parts, you know, first thing in the morning and lining guys out and, and getting on people to keep busy. Those are the things that you have to learn, not through training. And so uh, if you guys that have been in the military, um, you naturally are going to have uh, more leadership skills than somebody that didn't. So if you guys can come into this industry, focus, and swallow the pride, become a quick learner. Uh, when I say become a quick learner, swallow the pride so that you can become a quick learner and then pay attention to those leadership opportunities so that that's where our industry really needs us is, is, is leaders in the, in, in the field and in the offices. So I think that you guys bring that to the table for sure. And if there's any women in this, uh, in this audience listening, I, like I said, my apprentice is a, is a female electrician. It's, you get on the Instagram community uh, with the electricians, there's plenty of women in there. It's not something that you have to be this big, burly, strong, quick-witted guy to be an electrician. Um, like I said, my son who's 19 comes in and he, he, he'll wipe the floor with anybody in our company because he's been doing it for so long. So um, yeah, I just say you guys bring that leadership and positive attitudes into the field and you guys will be able to definitely uh, have be able to help the industry for sure. Well, fantastic. Well, Chad, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed our time. I really appreciate you joining me uh, tonight for our little fireside chat around uh, becoming an electrician. But I want to go ahead and just pull up the next slide here um, and just a, a big thank you. Uh, but we want to go ahead and give three little areas to where you can continue to explore the career trades of being an electrician. So we have what we talked about earlier. We have learned more about the trades. Uh, in general, all the trades with wearegenerationc.com. You can actually, like I said, look up an apprenticeship at that uh, with that website. You can find schooling in your zip code with that website. And you can also explore the trades a little bit more, figure out if it's for you or not. Um, you can connect with your USO Pathfinder Transition Specialist. Highly, highly recommend that. Um, it's one-on-one -on -one support, something that uh, when I got out of the military, I wish I would have had. I wish I would have had somebody there to support me. Um, a little bit closer than what the transition um, TAP classes for the Air Force had at that time. Uh, great program. I know most of the transition coaches with the USO, they're all fantastic people. They will help you. They have you in mind. I just tell them you're going to explore the, the skilled trades. They'll be able to help you um, point you in the right direction to be able to explore the skilled trades. And last, uh, you can connect with Lowe's uh, Military Recruiting. We'll push you, put, point you in the right direction. You can also connect with me if you're on LinkedIn. Uh, Michael Piper, look, look me up on LinkedIn. I'm more than willing to help you. Uh, I'm sure Chad would be more than willing, uh, but feel free to reach out and, and start exploring these opportunities. You're not alone in this journey, so make sure that you reach out, no matter if you're uh, a service member that's exiting the military and getting ready to transition, whether you're a military spouse and you're trying to get off into an, a new career, or if you're a dependent and you're looking um, at careers um, and in skilled trades and instead of going to college, feel free to reach out. We're here to help you. And uh, we look forward to helping you along that way. So without further ado, I'm actually going to turn it back over to Danielle. Well, thank you so much, Mike and Chad. Thank you as well. Um, so much fantastic information. Chad, can't thank you enough for your time and your valuable insights. Hopefully you all found it helpful. Um, so Sunny and I here on the USO team, are throwing all these links in the chat. We wanna make sure you get that information. So all of that is in there. You can click and access those if you would like them. I also just quickly wanted to mention if you happen to miss our transition to the trade series in November, we did host sessions just like this. One was about the HVAC industry and the other was about plumbing. So not to worry if you miss them, we're getting the links in the chat now for where you can find those on YouTube. Um, or as I like to say, pay it forward. If there's someone you know who's interested in those trades, please do pass that along to them so they can check that out and get lots of great information just like y'all got today. And in terms of um, penciling in in those calendars and saving the dates for future stuff, please keep an eye on uso.org slash MVP. That is a fan fantastic way to keep in touch with us and see what we have to offer in the world of military virtual programming. So that is everything and anything the USO does, whether it be entertainers or um, great transition webinars, just like this one today. So that website, one more time, is uso.org slash MVP, and that's where you can keep 
keep an eye on our calendar and also register for upcoming events, which I assure you we'll have many more this year. Um, next week, we're going to host the next edition of this Transition to the Trade series, and we will be talking about appliance repair. So if you're on the fence, kind of getting information about different trades, we invite you to join us again. That is next week, same time, same place, uh, Tuesday, January 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern here on Zoom. So um, once again, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. For those of you who are still hanging on, we do have a very special announcement. So hopefully we still got plenty of you here. Um, and special thanks to Southwire for sponsoring this. I am really excited to share with you all that we have a sweepstakes that you are eligible to enter um, for being one of our fantastic attendees in uh, today's webinar. So really quick and easy. If you would like to enter the sweepstakes, you can be the lucky winner of an electrician apprenticeship tool starter pack. Um, so great way to get um, a leg up in this new career if that's if you fit the bill there. So if you are interested, we've got more information up on the screen, but real easy. You've got until January 16th to just go in and complete a really um, brief three question survey. So that's the way that you enter the sweepstakes. Um, give us your information, tell us you're interested, and then we'll be doing a random drawing to select a lucky winner. Um, where I'm going to direct you to um, all of the rules and details are also posted online. All of those links are in the chat for you as well. Thank you so much, Sunny. Um, so good luck to you all. Hopefully you'll take a minute, enter the sweepstakes. And once again, a giant thank you to Southwire for sponsoring that very special giveaway. All right, folks. Well, that is all we have for you today. Once again, thank you so much for attending. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. And we look forward to seeing, hopefully, many of you again next week. Uh, thank you to our uh, partners at Lowe's. And again, Chad, um, very much appreciate your time here. That concludes today's event. You guys take care.